Morning. How are you all? Good? Good, thank you. Yeah, good, good. My name's Jamie from Jamp Software. Justin, pick up a mic, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Chris Go. I think most of you know me by now. Uh, third year in a row that we're presenting here, so really nice to be here. Thanks to Tony for having us back. He's not totally sick of us yet. Yeah, I'd like to really thank Tony for um, allowing us to uh, be involved in X-World. It's fantastic, and it's great to see it grow as well. The, uh, um, as you said, Tony, to, to be growing roughly by about 20% each year. It will be up to 100 next year, hopefully, so uh, looking forward to being involved in that as well. So thanks all for supporting it. Um, we thought that we would give you a bit of an update, uh, I suppose, on what's changed from last year to, to this year, both in our world at JAMP and, and what we're experiencing here in the uh, Australian and, and New Zealand market that we look after as well. So one thing that's changed is I've got a lot greyer. Um, I had to update my picture and uh, we decided to convert it to black and white to uh, hide some of that greyness. And also my roles changed. Um, well, the titles changed. I, I was regional sales manager last year. I'm now country manager of a country that doesn't exist because it's Australia and New Zealand. And I'm doing exactly the same job, so it's made no difference. Your role has uh, changed at all? No? You like to put senior on there, but it's not actually technically my role and I don't get paid as one, so I guess that's what counts as a promotion at Jamp. And I think that's why he looks angry in his picture as well. Do you reckon he looks angry in that picture? I reckon you need a title change. Um, also with that's, us... That's the best attempt at a beard that I can manage. <laughs> And also with us, uh, he came back for another year. Is that one working or not? Oh, I think you had the right one, mate. Did I? There you go. Cool. No, did it click? Oh, yeah. yeah. He came back for another year. He enjoyed last year so much. So, um, from the States, we have uh, John Sutcliffe here as well, our uh, Director of Software Engineering. So John will give us a... A, a great update and insight into the software and engineering team at JAMF and, and some changes and some pretty exciting changes that we've seen over the last year. But I thought we'd wind it way back to some hooded elves in an enchanted forest. And this is JAMF software as it was in uh, 2010. So I know Tony mentioned, it was 14 years, Tony, that X-World's been going, which is about the same time that JAMF have been going as well. So we don't have photos that go way back there. But this is JAMF week that's held every October, um, where basically the whole company got together to, for a couple of days to share ideas, to plan the year ahead, and to sink a massive amount of beer. Um, so you can see there's probably some rusty looking guys uh, there. Most of those people are still with JAMP, which is fantastic. So six years later, um, it's, it's certainly grown. You can see there that they're all looking a little bit more professional now. The hoods are down. Um, the leaves are still there every October. It's uh, before it gets too cold. So over the years, you can see there's a bit of a change. This is when Crisco and I first started. We're in there somewhere in 2013. And then 2014, um, some of the team here from support and so on uh, joined us. And this is this year. So we decided that uh, the forest couldn't hold us anymore. We went into the Guthrie Theatre, this is, which is funnily enough the same name as uh, um, the theatre we're in at the moment. So this is the Guthrie Theatre in Minneapolis. And that's the business now. So 550 people there is now at Jamp Software. And I suppose that just shows the success of uh, Apple out there, not only in education, but also in the commercial environment. So the team here has changed over the last year as well. Um, got a, a, a great team going, not only sales team, the sales team's actually the smallest team for Jamp Software here in Australia. Um, we have a huge support team, new guys, there's another Jamie, and I'm great to say we now have 
some females in the office because that burger smell was just too bad in the office. And, it, and we've now got um, Mel, who used to work with Apple, he, she looks after our renewals, and Jamie is on our support team as well. So it's fantastic that uh, we're diversifying uh, in that area. Um, our pro services guys, um, luckily we've got Daniel here who's doing a prezzo with Jamp Jeopardy later on today. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's something everybody can look forward to. At 420, which I think is a joke. Yeah. <laughs> we'll uh, have some good material ready. And we've also got some of the support guys here, Hayden and Barry as well. Um, one of the, the huge changes, though, that we've seen in the market beyond Jamf is, uh, I suppose, Apple's announcement uh, and their, uh, their new partnerships with uh, Cisco and IBM, and uh, we've seen that as being a big play into the enterprise market. Obviously, the Cisco on the networking and communication side, and IBM on the integration and the application side. Uh, it's been huge news, um, and you're probably wondering, well, how's it impacted us here? Um, we'll go into that in a little bit more detail. Um, but for us, uh, we were very honoured to have this person appear at our Jamf Nation user conference that we have every October, which is X World just on a, on a, on a bigger scale, if you like. Um, it's, a, it's a global event. So last year, last October, this guy did a presentation from IBM. Um, Fletcher Previn, his name is. Now, there's two interesting things about Fletcher. First, that he's the, uh, he reports to the CIO at IBM. And secondly, it's in his name. Does anybody know who his parents are? Anybody? Yeah, Mia Farrow. Yeah, yeah. I just find that fascinating for some reason. I don't know why. It's like, yeah, no, celebrities shouldn't have kids, but uh, yeah, they do. And uh, yeah, a good combination. So Fletcher is actually responsible for the IT, I suppose, at IBM reporting into the CIO. So he did a presentation um, on what IBM are doing with Macs. And this is what they're doing with Macs. They're rolling out 1,900 Macs globally a week. So um, there's one thing that's enabled that. It's not the Apple platform, but DEP has enabled that. And they're using Casper to support that as well, which is obviously fantastic for us. Um, They've now become our biggest customer. That 130,000 Macs they're now supporting within their organisation. And when you think about that, it was only 2005 that they sold Lenovo. So they've, in a decade, they've totally shifted from a manufacturer now to another platform. It's quite incredible. Um, there's some interesting stats came out of that as well that uh, it's only. 5% of Mac users call the help desk, whereas about 40% of Windows users call their help desk. Um, I don't know how this stat relates to what you guys are doing, but one help desk person per 5,000 staff for Macs. Now, uh, I don't know if that's changed or not, but uh, that's a pretty incredible figure. So they're having a great success with rolling out Macs. So how that relates locally as well, we've seen a real change with that, that choose your own device, which is what IBM are offering. We've seen that happen here in our region as well. Um, as you're well aware, Casper's very big in education, but over the last year, we've seen a massive change into the commercial market. If you look at the top five banks now, four of them are using Casper for managing the Macs that are on their network. Just out of interest, education, who's from an education organisation here? Commercial, great, and government. So yeah, maybe we, we don't have a government anymore. No, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> We're also waiting for that. <laughs> We've got Bob Catter. What do you mean? <laughs> so um, yeah, a few years ago, um, you know, we were just we were ninety percent education, and now we're about sixty percent commercial, government, and. Um, sorry, 40% commercial government, about 60% education. So that choose your own device, we've really seen that starting to take effect here in Australia in the last year. 
And some of the, when we go and talk to customers in these commercial environments, the big things for them that are enabling this choose your own device is DEP. Anybody using DEP here at the moment? How are you finding it? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a few hurdles to get through, but once you, you get through those, um, we're seeing a massive change out there in the market with DEP. But also, and, and I suppose this uh, plays into what Rich presented earlier, is the security side. A lot of organisations now are concerned about the security. They understand that the Macs are hitting their network. They can't stop that. The floodgates are opening. Um, they need to ensure that they're secure as well. So security is a big issue. Every conversation we have with a big organisation, their first concern is about security and how they can ensure those Macs are compliant. And then the last one, obviously, we, we hear a lot about is how can they update with now, you know, the Mac uh, OS being free, users can update at any time. How can they manage that? How can they keep their software up to date as well? So these are like the three key things that we're seeing happen in organisations uh, that are enabling a, a choose your own device program. So how do we support that locally as well? Um, how things changed for us in the last year? Well, we've expanded our support team as well. Barry will go into that in more detail. Barry, our support manager, has got a presentation um, for you later. Um, so the cases are increasing. Um, we've got a, a, a team at six now, Barry, is it with Jamie starting? Yeah, so we support the APAC region. So our customers, that's unlimited, they can call. And a lot of that's not just issues, it's not just related to Casper, it's also advice, like VPP, what's the best way of managing VPP and so on. Um, and our, we're one of the major support hubs here in Sydney as well, so the guys, when they knock off at the end of the day here, it, it rolls over to our hub in Amsterdam, and then there's our Eau Claire hub in Wisconsin as well. So it, it's great that Jamf have recognised the talent that we have here and the market that we have here and the growing market we have here that needs support. Beyond that, how things have changed for us on the pro services side. So our engineers do the jump starts, the, which is the onboarding, if you like, the, the install, the setup and the training. And this has become very important with these organisations that are new to managing Max. Um, 230 jump starts we did this, uh, over the last year. And the great stat we see there is nearly 50 of them were large com commercial or government organisations. So again, a few years ago, we wouldn't be talking about this. So we're seeing that real, real desire to support the Macs. But with that, there's a, there's a desire to learn more. And that's where we think XWorld can help, is like sharing that knowledge. Because we, we see it's, it's happening. It's now, how can we support those customers? How can we educate those customers in supporting their environments? Training, we also offer that as well. So Rusty, our trainer, is not here. I think he's doing a course somewhere, but we do that certified training courses. So over the last year, our training courses, we have 135 admins out there. So again, that, it's sharing that knowledge, spreading that knowledge around, and that helps all of us. That keeps us all in the job later on, doesn't it, really? The more successful Apple is, the more organisations that are supporting Apple, the more successful we all are. But beyond that, it's how it can support the community beyond just directly, but indirectly through events like today, X World. Um, we're, we also have our own roadshow that we now put on um, globally. Luckily, um, we just announced the dates last week. Melbourne and Sydney will be doing a roadshow as well, a, a one day event where we'll have customers presenting. So you'll, uh, we can share some information with you on that later on. Um, Maxis Admin event in Gothenburg we have in October. We'll be supporting that. And then there's the JNUC, the Jamf Nation User Conference in Minneapolis. So uh, um, if any of you find yourselves in Minneapolis in October, you want to get in that enchanted forest. Any, anyone registered to go to that this year? Ex awesome. Excellent. What, what about for Sweden? Anyone going to that one? Oh, Cameron loves uh, <laughs> so much about Sweden. So. When you are in Minneapolis in October, look out for John. You're going to be there, aren't you? Beers are on John. Okay, if you've made the effort to get over there, <laughs> you can expense that, John. Yeah, yeah, just put it against our APAC expenses. Yeah. Um, okay, look, 
I'll finish off and hand over to Chris Gay to give you more technical updates. Um, last thing is Jamf Nation. Are you guys all using Jamf Nation? Are you finding it a useful resource? One of the things that um, John will go into is the feature requests. I mean, the feature requests that we have logged in Jamf Nation from our customers build the product. So it, it, those of you using Casper, Really important, if you've got ideas, if you'd like to see something work in Casper or um, something improved in Casper, log it in Jamf Nation because we do look at those feature requests, we do get them on the roadmap and John can go into that in more detail later on in his presentation. So, talking about Casper, I'm gonna hand over to Chris Go. You don't need the mic. So this is the point where uh, last year I started talking uh, roadmap stuff. Um, I'm not going to do too much of that this year, partly because it's being filmed, partly because, and I don't want to lose my job, uh, partly because uh, John's here and he will talk about that in his session this afternoon. Um, what I thought might be um, good is just to explain, I guess, how we see um, the products that we work on at Jamf and how that's perceived internally. So, um, and I do get that question a lot because um, not only are there um, the very visible uh, logos that you see here, but um, then there's other things that people work on, such as NetSAS, um, some of the open source projects that are out there, some of the API stuff and so on. So, this is the, the positioning that we had uh, as a company at the start of the year. Uh, and, and I think one of the neat things here is that Jamf Nation is very much perceived as a Jamf product now, which means uh, it gets the appropriate amount of resources put into it, right? Rather than for a long time, it was li literally one person working from home that was keeping that running. It's actually got a whole team behind it now that, that does that. Uh, and you'll see a lot more uh, automation from our side put into that. Um, Barry will talk through some of that in his session tomorrow. Uh, and you'll see that continue to evolve uh, over time as well. And the idea is that it, it should become you know, more of a product that IT people want to use, right? You should uh, be able to do more things uh, either automatically or online and, and not actually have to talk to someone. I think, um, sorry to interrupt, but one of, one of the other stats that we love about Jamf Nation is, I mean, we just ticked over the 35,000 registered users in Jamf Nation, but 40% of those are, are not Casper customers. So it, it's not just a community for Casper customers, it's for anybody that's interested in the Apple platform and helping each other and sharing some knowledge. So we're, we're as proud of that stat as any other, that uh, it, it's got such a high take up outside of the, the Casper community. The other question I get a lot is, explain the difference between Bushel uh, and Casper. So we, we really see Bushel as being um, a product, uh, an IT product for people that don't do IT as a career, right? So small business is very much the, um, where we want that to sit. Um, we think there's a nice niche there for businesses that don't necessarily have a dedicated IT team. Right? So it's someone who works in marketing or sales or an office admin person and they're expected to do um, those particular tasks. And that's why um, uh, you'll see a lot of the, the ways that we work in the interface are, are deliberately quite simple. The great thing about that is it's also, because there's, it, it's not a, a legacy product, right? it, it's relatively new, uh, it lets us try new things. Right? So uh, we can uh, test out things there uh, it's a web-only product. There's no existing workflows we have to impact. Uh, we can try things there as a bit of a sandpit, uh, and if they work out, we can um, bring those learnings across to Casper. So uh, that's where Bushel sits at, at the moment. Casper is really around uh, helping IT to help their users. So uh, Casper is, uh, I guess, the pro product, uh, really aimed at... Um, helping people like yourself. So people that do have IT as a career. <coughs> now in terms of how those products work together, at the moment they're, they're very much separate. And um, I think that as we look at that, we realise, hey, an organisation might start out small, it might want to then hit a point where it moves across to Casper, and these are things that we need to make easier. So we're constantly looking at that situation and how we can improve both of these offerings, uh, perhaps make them a bit more aware of each other and, and improve that for everyone who's using it. 
John will talk about some of the, the learnings that we've had from Bushel as a, I guess as a project, particularly around the interface and what we can do to hopefully make your lives better as well. So that helps to ex sort of explain the, the product. Obviously what we're mostly talking about over the next two days, uh, uh, at least from a Jamf point of view, is Casper. So looking back, I guess, uh, at what we've done with the product uh, recently. Um, I always love this slide, particularly with this audience, right? Because I know that most of you look at this and you'll actually be able to tell me all the code names from all the big cats that are here, right? I'm not, I won't ask because I know you know them. <laughs> Sometimes you look at them and you shudder a little bit with some of them, don't you? But I think what this show, or perhaps that could be some of the Casper logos that you actually shudder at. <laughs> not too sure what was happening back in the Pac-Man days there, but... Yeah. Uh, I don't know what they were smoking in that forest. No. <laughs> Blame the elves. Uh, I, think, I think we've improved on that side at least. So, um, but what I think this shows is just the length of time we've been around and supporting the Apple platform. And that's something we're very proud of, obviously. Uh, MDM or EMM uh, is a very crowded space these days. Um, and we like to, to reflect on this sometimes and think, hey, we've actually got a lot of experience here in managing Apple devices. Uh, and that's, that's something we should be able to build on and continue helping the community with. Obviously, uh, the other thing that you'll see that's changed here is, I guess, the cadence of releases that Apple have put out. So you can see those gaps in the throughout the 2000s when it would be, you know, 18 months, sometimes two years between releases. Uh, it was a relatively stable situation for administrators like yourself, right? So you had time to build an SOE, image your labs, image your machines, push that out, uh, wait till it was ready, as well, to test it. Yeah, you could. Remember when you could actually wait till a dot four or five before you actually push that out? You know, look at the, the back end now. It's very much a, a very regular annual event. And that's something that unfortunately you've got to be ready for now because your users are going to come in with those releases and demand that from you. So we really see it vital that Casper keeps up with Apple in this area. Uh, that's something we probably haven't always been the best at in past years but very much a huge focus of the company. Uh, and again, in John's session this afternoon, he'll talk about how we're ensuring that's gonna happen. So that's a, looking back over the last uh, 15 years, what have we done this year? Well, sometimes I think about three years ago when our founder, Zach, got up and announced that we would have patch management. <laughs> I think, I think... <laughs> yeah, a big round of applause then. Yeah. 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 I think that was Jamf's Copeland moment, to be honest. Um, I actually looked for a Copeland slide to put on here. Um, if you don't know what that was, that was uh, back in a very long time ago now, uh, when Apple, back in the System 7 days, was trying to update their operating system and uh, made a lot of promises that never really happened, never really went anywhere. On the positive side, they went and bought Next and, and now we have OS X and they got Steve Jobs. So when I think back on that moment, sometimes I get a little bit disheartened and I think, you know what, that's been a long time now and we still haven't managed to get that done. Um, if you've got questions on that, there's a man here you can ask about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we bring you here, dude, <laughs> just to run interference. So. Um, it was interesting when I built this slide to look back at what we have accomplished in the last year, right? And uh, two things that stand out for me. One is there's actually been quite a few releases over the last 12 months that we've done, okay? The other thing that I note is if you look at that, um, the second half of 2015, not a lot was happening there apart from supporting Apple's uh, releases. And then you look at um, the next six months very regular cadence there, right? Stuff popping out very quickly. And the reason for that is very much around what we've done with our development teams. Uh, and again, this is a nice, uh, it'll be a segue into what John talks about this afternoon uh, as he leads up the development teams. Um, but but the, the big thing we've done there is really adopt an agile methodology, right? And this may sound familiar to you. We've actually said that for a few years now. Oh yeah, we, we work agile. Turns out we were just saying that, not really doing it. Um, and, I, and when I talk about this with some people, everyone usually nods and goes, oh yeah, yeah I think we do the same thing, yeah. Um, 
having having our new CEO Dean, who's been on board for about a year now, one of the things he realised was that we had improvements to make in that space. And um, his his new team was said, look, when you start operating properly and doing agile properly, you're actually going to find stuff on your roadmap is actually going to pull in, right? Instead of being pushed out and delayed, it's actually going to get start done quicker and earlier. And everyone went, yeah, right. <laughs> That's never happened here. Um, and this chart kind of shows that is happening, right? Surprises everyone. Um, when I, I look at that, it's really um, positive to know that some of the stuff that we're getting done now is, is stuff that's either been hanging around for a few years and we've never got managed to get around to, uh, or it's really exciting feature-driven stuff, not just fixes, it's actually like, let's innovate in these spaces. So uh, I'm really positive about the roadmap that we've got coming in the next year. I think um, the other thing that really struck me once I'd done that slide was I thought, so what have we actually accomplished in the last year? These are just the major points from each uh, set of release notes for those versions in the last year, right? Um, this doesn't include bug fixes, hot fixes, little minor uh, things. These are the big tick boxes that the teams are working on. Uh, and I was like, wow, we actually did get a lot done in the last year. But, you know, this is a product that really is improving. Um, I know we'd all love it to be awesome. We'd love if there was no bugs in it. Um, and that's not the reality of software development. But uh, it gave me a lot of heart that, hey, as Jamie pointed out, we've got a massive team now. It's still very focused on development. Um, the product's improving. And that's thanks to, to you and the feature requests that you put in. I think one of the other things that it's very much down to is where the company's based. And for those who don't know, uh, the Jamf software is based in Midwest America. That's neither in the middle nor the west of America. I don't know why it's called that. Um, the main takeaway is it's very cold for probably nine months of the year, right? You think it's cold at the moment? John's here. John walks around in a t-shirt most days in Sydney, right? He's like, this isn't cold. <laughs> That's not a knife. Um, so. Jamie and I, on one of our first visits there, it, it was a few years back, and uh, it turned out it was minus 30 degrees Celsius. And uh, we went out for a little walk at night just to see how cold that actually is. It's, it's kind of crazy, right? <laughs> it's, it's so cold, you can't even make a snowball because there's actually no... Hum like, stuff is so frozen, doesn't even stick together apart from your, your fingers. And uh, we came across these uh, kids out on this uh, bridge here, and they had a thermos in their hands, and we thought... Well, hot actually, coffee, I, yeah, hot coffee, we wanted it bad. Yeah. Uh, I was hoping for scotch. But uh, <laughs> anyway, it turns out these kids had uh, hot water in this thermos. And we're like, what are you kids doing? And he goes, you watch this. And this is what he did. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> so you throw the hot water up and it turns into snow straight away. It was pretty awesome. And, and I think that slide really sums up how we feel about Jamf these days, how we feel about X-World. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We're really happy to be here. Um, I think the sessions that we're putting on this year uh, from our side are, are really good, really technical. We've aimed to really kind of uh, hit the mark on what you guys wanted to see. Uh, and I hope that that works for you. Feel like you can come up and talk to any one of us, abuse us, ask us questions, ask for beer. Uh, ask John about patch management. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, thanks for coming, guys. Let's have a good two days.